Hello, good evening. This is the BBC. We interrupt regular schedules to bring you live Irish mints. A very good evening, Cade Mila Falche, Mokarja Galer, or Fod Macrina, Guji on Lowerland Show. It's Misha Anton. August, for the next hour or hour and a half, we are going to be talking about Nile of the Nine Hostages. This is Live Irish Mits episode number 199, the second in our two part series dealing with Nile of the Nine Hostages, probably the most famous, or at least one of the most famous, of the Kings of Tara. We're streaming simultaneously on the Mythical Ireland YouTube channel and also on the Mythical Ireland Facebook page. Uh, perhaps somebody who drops in might share the stream on the Mythical Ireland community and the Mythical Ireland creatives on Facebook. Joe Butler usually does that, so I'm sure she'll be along presently. If you're tuning in this evening, please do. I'm just switching my phone onto silent, something I forgot to do beforehand. If you're tuning in this evening, please do say hello wherever you are in the world, and we will say hello right back at you. There are some announcements tonight before we get going there. Look, speak of the devil, and then she's not a devil at all. She's quite the opposite. She's an angel, uh, and that is Auntie Jo, who has shared the stream to the Mythical Ireland community. Thank you indeed. Elaine Dent Lingenfelter is the first here tonight. Uh, Elaine, uh, 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 I hope you are keeping well. Uh, ben Davis is in a beautiful Texas. Yes, I can imagine the weather is a little bit uh, warmer and sunnier there than it is here at this time of the year. Marianne Kinge is in the house. Hello, Marianne. You're very welcome. Watching on YouTube. Also on YouTube is Alva Kelly. Greetings from the dark night. I'm drinking a cup of stinging nettle and elderflower tea while I'm waiting for the dawn. Fabulous stuff. I'd say that's very curative. I think nettle has... But I'm elderflower, I'm sure, too. But nettle has very curative powers, doesn't it? Helen Hurst Chatter is watching from the Black Hills of South Dakota. Good evening. Good afternoon to you, Helen. Michael Pike is in the house. A good evening, Michael. You're very welcome to the stream. As always, Anne Scott Doherty is in beautiful southern Oregon, where it is a beautiful fall day. Yes, the leaves, they do be turning. They'll be falling off the trees here soon enough. Uh, Natasha, is it Royce, Royst? Says, good evening from the Netherlands. Apologies for the pronunciation if it's wrong. Regularly, my pronunciations are dreadful. So uh, apologies in advance for that, but you're very welcome. Andrew Savasso is in Michigan. Hello, Andrew. You're very welcome. A good afternoon to you. Jason is saying hello to everyone. A uh, uh, Snapper Earl says, here I am. There you are, is right. Sue Prenter is in the house. Hello, Sue. You're very, very welcome to the stream. Susan Mullen Lacerna is in Raleigh in North Carolina. And uh, you're you're very welcome along to our stream. Mandy McCurl is saying hello from a wet and windy Isle of Mull. Never. What? You mean the sun isn't splitting the stones? Wayne Bird says, hope you are well. Jupiter's looking bright and close. Yeah, it's been fabulous this past while. Actually, did you see during the week during the past week, the night when the moon and Jupiter were close, and then the moon and Mars, which is fabulous. Madison Morell is watching from New Brunswick, Canada. I've been away too long. Glad to be back. Well, we are glad to have you back, Madison. You're very welcome to the live stream. Daisy Peters is in the house watching from Rio. Hello to you. Wonderful start to the week. Well, I hope you agree uh, at the end of it. Uh, <laughs> always easy to say it at the start. <laughs> Adrian O'Beglin is in the house. Adrian Conosatatu. Rex Fortenbury is saying greetings to the tour from Louisiana. In line for my COVID booster. Good stuff. Help protect you through the winter. Uh, this thing just hasn't gone away yet. Um, okay, I'm actually up to date with the comments. So I have some announcements. Some news before we get going with Nile of the Nine Hostages Part 2 of 2. Um, uh, Barbara Murphy is in a lovely Tucson, Arizona. Some of the states being described as lovely. Um, Texas is in competition with you there. Um, Barbara, but uh, you're you're very welcome, and I hope you're in good form. Samantha Healy is saying hello from London. Hello, Samantha. A very good night to you from the Boyne Valley to our all our friends uh, just across the water in the great city of London. Heather Marie Leaning is saying hello. Ill, hello indeed. You're, you're you're most welcome. You're very very welcome. Tom King is in the house. Hello there, Anthony, and all the mighty two. A part two and enjoying a feed of sausages. That's right, a mound of sausages. 
the mound of the sausages. <laughs> Enjoy story time. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, um, yes, I just had a pork dinner, actually. So there you go. Snapper Earl says, New York is lovely. Brutal and lovely. <laughs> Can't argue with that. I did describe it as a ridiculous city uh, with in my interview with Morgan Llewellyn. Uh, which is uh, still viewable to patrons. Um, ridiculous as in how many people can fit in such a small space, you know. Samantha says, love the look of the new calendar. Yeah, that's one of the announcements, actually. Uh, <laughs> I suppose I could get started on that. Uh, Alan Hoskins is saying hello from the Midwest of Ireland. Beautiful, crisp autumn evening. Hope all well. All good. I just hate the fact that the day has to shorten so much more. Other than that, I'd be well able to deal with winter because I think this time of year is really beautiful. Yeah, the calendar. Was supposed to be here today i got word from the printer today that it won't be here till thursday or friday that's not their fault the calendar was printed and sent to the place that does the binding so there's a wire binding you know the spring the wiry twisty spirally thing yoky thing of me buzzer on the top that holds all the leaves together uh apparently the company that's doing that is overrun with work and there's a slight delay look it's not a problem uh there are lots of pre-orders thank you very much and they will be dispatched uh, pretty much as soon as I get the calendars from the printer. Uh, you know, just need time to write address labels and or print address labels and tape up envelopes. Um, in fact, I was looking this. It was mid-November last year before I got the 2022 Mythical Ireland calendar from the printer. So uh, I think we're doing well. Um, I Well, what I'm saying is we're ahead of time. The, the 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 sorry i'm just taking a note here the cal the calendar will be in your hands uh, this year all going well maybe a week or two before the time that it had arrived to me from the printer last year if you get me uh maria mcteera uh is is uh miriam yes eckhart yes indeed miriam you are very very welcome hello to you catherine woodruff is saying Hello from snowing and blowing central Wisconsin. Snowing. Oh dear. The thing I'm a bit, thing thing they may, may, may give you watch what you call it. Yes, something like that, Samantha. Yes, 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 indeed. The Yokomi buzzer, the thing of me, the thing of me, Bob. Yeah. Salav is in the house uh, from uh, Loch. Is that Loch Nay? Loch Nay wishing you well. I hope you're not swimming. Uh, I hope you're on the on the shore in some sort of safe and warm abode. Angel Barboni is in the house. Saying love to us all and indeed grow more art uh, angel from all of us in the community. And uh, Elaine wants Tom to email her some of his sausages. <laughs> yes, 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 very good. So the calendars are very slightly delayed, but I'm told they'll be here Thursday slash Friday. So tours. Wow. We had a great tour at Delft yesterday. Uh, the first, I hope, in a series of what I would call public mythical ireland tours in that i'm as you probably know i'm available for hire as a private tour guide and i have been doing so for about 15 years uh, but now uh, i'm starting to organize these what i call public tours where people can book a ticket instead of you know hiring me for a day um you know that people can come along to these tours anyway we had a lovely day at doubt yesterday the heavy rain that was due to come in the afternoon held off until we were finished i'm glad to report it was only when we were home and under the roof here uh, safe and dry that it started to rain heavily um yeah a fantastic turnout you probably saw some of the photographs um if not on the facebook page or the instagram uh, you might have seen it on the blog on the mythical ireland website uh yeah really great uh, crowd and we were exploring the archaeology the mythology and the history of doubt uh the sort of overshadowed and slightly forgotten sister mound of Newgrange and now that Bruna Bonia <laughs> overshadowed to see what I did there any of you who are on the tour yesterday or are familiar with my work on doubt will know what I'm talking about the shadow of the eclipse Maureen Joyce is in Lexington Kentucky where it is sunny send a bit of it round the world there will you <coughs> excuse me Maureen <coughs> great surname by the way great first name first of all I wonder are you related to the Bell James uh, he of uh, uh, Dubliners fame and you were saying Dubliners? Yes. And Finnegan's Wake and Ulysses. Um, yes, where am I? So the next tour, uh, actually, 
it's a series. It's not just one. Um, I'm going to do a tour of Fornox on Saturday, the 12th of November. And the reason we're not having one big tour like we had at Douth is because if I was to sell 50 tickets and people were to turn up, there'd be nowhere for them to park. Because those of you who've been to Fornox will know that the road that runs alongside or outside the monument is quite narrow. So I've split it into three. There's an 11 a.m. tour. There's a 12.30 tour. And there's a 2 p.m. tour. Um, uh, tickets uh, available on the Mythical Ireland website uh, on the tours page. MythicalIreland.com. And just click on tours and you'll see the information there. Um, that is selling rather quickly, considering I just announced that last night. Um, tickets are already selling very fast. So I know that sounds like a sales ploy, but they are selling fast. So if you want to go on that tour, get your tickets now. So a very special announcement. Josie Weatherford is just after getting out of Irish class. Hello to everyone. Fault you, uh, Josie. Good to see you again. Um, this being episode number, as you can see from the above, sorry, I'll get it, I'll point to the right place. Episode number 199, you know what that means. That means we've done this 199 times. That means next week is episode number 200. I did say last week I would try to think of something to do to celebrate. Well, I have thought of something to do to celebrate. Samantha says, the prehistory guys mentioned to you the other night, yes, uh, at short notice, Rupert Soskin did invite me onto the show, but I was uh, otherwise occupied, unfortunately. I would have loved to have gone on, but I'm glad uh, to have gotten the mention. I love the prehistory, guys, you know. Uh, and yes, uh, I think they're going to have me on, and they were delighted. Uh, we had we had a great time here. We spent a day and a half in each other's company here in the Boyne Valley. Next week, the long-awaited Mythical Ireland quiz is happening. Woohoo! So, uh, and you're going to say, have you finally gotten around to writing out 100 questions? And the answer is, yes, I have. I have prepared 100 questions for next week's quiz. Now, I'm not entirely sure of the complete format yet. And in fact, I would ask, I need a little bit of help. Uh, Gordon Farrell is in the house. Uh, hello, Gordon. Uh, good evening to you. Um, so, what I plan to do is have 10 rounds of 10 questions. I want to do it on Zoom because I think it's nice for that interaction when we've done Zoom stuff before we've had a great time. I would like if somebody can help me with this. So I have a, a business Zoom account. So I can set up the Zoom meeting for 50 or 100 people and we can it can go on for two hours if we like. There's no restriction, right? But what I would like is the ability for people to form teams so maybe a few people will cobble together a team called, you know, the Stone Agers. Somebody else will call themselves the Myth Mamas, you know. Someone else will call themselves the Irish Maids. I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas out. And that somebody would help me in terms of collecting the answers and scoring the answers. I can share the... I've done it on an Excel sheet. So on one sheet are the 100 questions. And on another tab are the 100 answers. So I don't see the answers when I know the answers, of course. I don't see the answers when I'm asking the questions. It's just in case I blurt them out by accident, by mistake. Um, all of the questions are based on uh, Mythical Ireland topics, uh, stuff that we've talked uh, talked about in the past 199 episodes of Live Irish Myths, stuff that's on the website, stuff I've written about, archaeology, mythology, Irish history. Um, now, I will be honest, some of them are dead easy. And you should all be getting them. You know, you'll do some of this quiz uh, blindfolded uh, with earplugs in. Some of them are a little bit tough. So I'm just trying to see exactly who was paying attention over the last few years. Right? No, we'll have a bit of crack. Do you know what? We'll have a bit of fun. And I was thinking that as a prize, I would offer a 50 euro voucher uh, for Mythical Ireland to be spent on anything on the website. And as a second prize, I'll offer a 25 euro voucher just for the, the fun of it, because we're, we're having fun and uh, I hope that you all enjoy it. So I just have to figure out a little bit of the logistics. So I have the 100 questions and I could just literally sit here on Zoom and, and ask question by question, but I'd like to be able to take in uh, the 10 answers at a time from the teams and get someone to yeah. score them. Um, without me having to do that so that I can progress, you know, with the next set of 
questions and maybe answer the previous round's questions or maybe two rounds ago. You know, in round one, we had a question, you know, what is the age of Newgrange? The correct answer is 5,200 years, you know, and, and then to see all the reaction as people go, oh, I said 5,150, you know. Um, so anyway, perhaps if there is anybody out there with a little bit of experience in organizing people together into teams on Zoom and how we might coordinate the answers. Look, otherwise, what I can do is just uh, do a 10 questions at a time, accept the answers uh, in as a message on Zoom, paste them into a document and score them afterwards. But I think it'd be nice to kind of keep it going. If somebody could keep tab of the scores, then, you know, they could be telling me, you know, the, the mythical maids are ahead. They got 10 out of 10 and close behind are, you know, uh, the, the Stone Agers with nine, you know, uh, and that sort of thing. But um, Sue Prenter says, I am very happy to score for the quiz. Brilliant stuff, Sue. Thank you for that. And uh, I think that's maybe you that's messaging me there uh, on Facebook. So, yeah, um, let's chat about that. Amadeus is happy now. Coda told him hi, says Desiree. Yes. He's, uh, he's making a little bit of noise, as he is wont to do. Um, so that's it. Next week, um, I will advertise that in advance. You will have to register because um, it's on Zoom. So we won't be having our regular YouTube and Facebook live stream, but we will record the quiz and upload it to YouTube and Facebook afterwards. How does that sound? So I'll share the, the link in the coming days, and you register, and you'll get the link that you'll have to go to at eight o'clock next Monday night to participate in what will be a, a live quiz, you know? So, um, I hope, uh, that uh, you all enjoy that. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I have to say I've scored, as I said, I put together a hundred questions and some of them are like, Oh, geez, that's so easy. And then the next one is like, Oh, Oh, that's a good one. It's, uh, you know, a certain number of them. Well, you'd have to have been paying attention to live Irish myths quite closely in some cases actually so it'll be good it'll be good it look more than anything it'll be good fun you know rowan grove is in the house saying hello from colorado long time no see rowan as in two days <laughs> how, how are you i hope you're well longbow says anthony can add another to the list as i have been captured as well uh brilliant stuff uh, longbow uh, i take it you mean you are captured into the mythical ireland world uh, Alva Kelly, I'm not sure if I said hello to you, but hello anyway. Uh, the other thing is that the full-length uh, film uh, with Michael Quirk, the Sligo storyteller and woodcarver, is now available for Mythical Ireland patrons at the Bronze Age level and above. And to become a patron at the Bronze Age level and above, that's $10 a month. Uh, you just go over to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. There's the address just here, forward slash Mythical Ireland. Uh, it's an hour and a half long. Uh, initial reaction has been really fabulous. People really, really enjoying it. Uh, and really, it, it wasn't an interview as such. It was more a conversation, but it's mostly Michael doing the talking. I tried to shut up as much as possible just to let the man do his thing. And he really is wonderful. A wonderfully warm, knowledgeable, friendly, amicable uh, human being. Uh, a wonderful person to spend company in, you know. So uh, Guido is saying, I'm not able to join next week. We're away for a few days to Antwerp. Oh, no. Ah, oh, look, but your look, you know. Um, and Barbara says, not just paying attention, but having a good functioning memory. That is a good point. I hope to see who has been taking notes in my lessons and how many people are going to miss questions because they were late for live Irish myths. <laughs> I, I, I jest, of course, I jest. All I can say in relation to the film of Michael Quirk is the plan is that that is part of a series. The next one in the series is being filmed this week in the coming days. I'm not at liberty to say who is featured or where it's being shot, but I can tell you that the patrons will, of course, be the first to find out uh, the, the next in the series of those uh, on camera conversations. You know, we've had a few live conversation episodes as a live stream. It's not the same. Sitting down with somebody face to face with cameras rolling is just a much more immersive and personal experience. Keep posted because I have a couple of people that I want to ask to feature in that series. And I think that's going to be a, 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 a great one. Um, so a super printer saying to everyone, Michael is a superb person. Terrific interview. Worth 
becoming a patron for thank you for that plug sue and i'm glad that you enjoyed it that as i say the feedback is really magnificent and just to say uh, I know that some of you got this. I had an advanced copy of this, as you know. This is Moncon McGann's new book, uh, which is Listen to the Land Speak. I've dipped in and out of it, haven't had uh, time uh, to read it uh, thoroughly. Uh, but what I've seen so far is fabulous. Um, Moncon, as you know, was a guest on our live conversation series uh, during the lockdowns. Um, and uh, I'm hoping to meet him face to face in the coming week. Um, so uh, maybe he'll. Uh, Maybe we'll, we'll get him on at some point to talk about his book. And a beautiful book, uh, gift from uh, Josie Weatherford at the end of my tour of Douth yesterday was the wonderful uh, Irish Folklore Treasury by John Creedon. Uh, John Creedon, as you know, is an RTE broadcaster who uh, has featured on uh, uh, Live Irish Myths in a recorded episode uh, speaking about his previous book, That Place We Call Home. Um, John, a wonderful man. I've been on his program, Creedence Atlas of Ireland, and, and this is a signed copy as well. So fabulous stuff. Uh, a really, really thoughtful gift and lovely in hardback. There's just something beautiful about it. So I'm kind of really, really spoilt this week. I've got Moncon on one hand and John Creedon on the other. I mean, are you all totally jealous or what? Uh, yeah, you absolutely are. Admit it. Anyway, onwards and upwards, as they say. It's time that we started doing our story time because it's after 20 past eight. Uh, can Irish speakers speak to the Welsh? Michael wants to know. Uh, only in English. Uh, Welsh and Irish are very different branches of the Celtic uh, languages. Um, very, very different. Um, some similarities, but uh, no. Uh, I believe a, 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 a Gaelic, an Irish speaker, a, Gael, Gaelga, a speaker of Gaelga, Irish, uh, and a speaker of Scots Gaelic may be able to understand a lot of what they're saying, but uh, not Irish and Welsh, no. Just checking to see if I've missed anyone else. Adina Sparks is running late, bringing in firewood. Well, look, that's a that's a brilliant excuse for being late, by the way. Uh, I was just saying we're having a quiz next week um, on, uh, on Zoom uh, to celebrate the fact that next week is the 200th anniversary of Live Irish Myths, the 200th episode, should I say. And it's a, it's a quiz, not an episode, really. So there you go. But we will record it and have... Look, as I said, the main thing is that we have lots and lots of fun. And it'll be funny, I can assure you. There's a few questions. There's a few real stinkers in there. Uh, it'll be a real test, you know? It'll be a real test. Some of them, as I say, really easy. But some of them will be just going, Oh, oh I remember he said this on a, episode 14. But that was two years ago, you know? <laughs> Thanks, lad, says Michael. You're very welcome, Michael. Thank you for joining us. I don't think we've... Uh, what? Uh, I'm just trying to... Sorry, the bloody camera gets in my... What am I going to do? Anyway, never mind. Um, yeah, you're very welcome, Michael. I uh, haven't seen you before. I don't think I recognise the name. So, welcome to Live Irish Myths. I hope you're enjoying it. So, let's get going. This is the second uh, part of uh, our uh, exploration of Nile of the Nine Hostages. And I am reading... Oh, God. I have a lot of reading to do, so I better get going. This is from Early Irish History and Mythology by T.F. O'Reilly. While Niall's fame in later ages was associated mainly with his warlike exploits outside Ireland, he probably has a more genuine title to fame in his achievements at home. Though, for reasons that will appear later, these have been allowed to fall into oblivion. It will help to clarify the following discussion. Uh, it will help to clarify the following discussion if at the outset we quote the official pedigree of Niles' relations. Uh, and here he, he actually prints a, uh, a family tree. I probably should show that to you if I can organise to get the camera focused and not get in the way of the light. There you go. Hope you can see all that. Yochul Mugmadon is his father. Yuki Mugmadon, of course, we did an episode, I don't know what episode number it was, but we did an episode which was called Nile and the Hag, and, the, and that was the episode in which, uh, uh, let's not spoil it, actually. It's probably going to be mentioned in here. For Nile's ancestors, at, at any rate, those earlier than his father, Yuki, the pedigree is wholly unreliable, as I have already remarked. His relationship to his, quote, 
brothers, unquote, Fiacra, Brian, Brian, and Ailil, all three of them connected with Connacht, must also be treated with considerable scepticism. Brian, for instance, that would be Brian to you and I. His name's Brian! Would appear to have lived a generation or two later than Niles. His name's Brian, and he's a very naughty boy! <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, when the early pedigree makers decided to make the three Connacht men brothers of Niall, they apparently had some qualms about it, for they admitted that Niall had a different mother, Karen. And the funny thing is, I always say in my story that, uh, you know, um, uh, Niall had, in fact, four brothers, Fergus, Fiacra, uh, 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 Fergus, Fiacra, uh, Brian and Eilil, you know, um, so um, uh, in this case, they had three, apparently. Uh, Fiachra, the father of Na'i, may be ultimately the same as Fiachu Sravtene, who appears some generations back in the pedigree. Compare Dahi Mac Fiachrach Sravtene, or 136B32. If this is not merely a scribal slip. Yahu Domlain, uh, or Dovlain, I presume, may ultimately be the mythological Yahu, the sun god, with whom, too, tradition has, in part, confused Yahu Niall's father. And of course, as we have said before, there were many uh, important figures and kings in Irish mythology who were called Yahu or Yochi, uh, including Yochi Olahar, the Dagda. A cardinal event in Ir early Irish history was the establishment of kingdoms, at first approximately coextensive with the present county of Donegal in the northwest of Ulster, by three of the sons of Niall, viz. Owen, Connell and Enda. Two of these kingdoms afterwards rose to great prom prominence under the names of Chiron and Chirconnell. It is tolerably certain that these conquests by Niall's sons were made in Niall's lifetime. The annals pass over them in silence, though if sorry, though if they took place after 431, we might reasonably expect to find some allusion to them. According to Flan Munstrach, uh, Owen took possession of Alyak and reigned there for 40 years. And of course, that's a, um, um, a Grianon Alyak in the modern day county of uh, uh, Donegal. It would be rash to place much reliance on the length assigned by Flan to Owen's reign. Yet the date he implies for the capture of Alyak, 425 uh, AD, I presume 40 years before Owen's death in 465, may well be approximately correct. Traditions embodied in several of the Ulidian tales, as well as legends such as those relating to Cormac Ocoan and the Battle of Crinia, suggest very plainly that during an extended period, an aggressive warfare was waged by the men of Tara with the help of the vassals whom they employed as fighting men against the Ullad. Uh, that's the Ulla or the Ulla, the Ulstermen, who were the dominant power in Ulster. The warfare ended in the subjugation of the northern province. The settlement of the three sons of Nile in the northwest of Ulster marks the end of the struggle. The overthrow of the Ulidian power completely changed the political face of the province. The Ullad themselves were driven eastwards into County Down. Their kinsmen, the Doyle Rita, were henceforth confined to a small territory in the north of County Antrim. Dalrietha, of course, uh, also uh, spelt or pronounced slightly different, differently as the Dalrietha. A body of the Crohan of East Ulster, who we need not doubt had hitherto been subjects of the Ullad, were formed into an independent state under the name of Dal Naridi. The central and south Ulster, sorry, in central and south Ulster, a number of vassal states were set up. Among these were the Arher, uh, the east, eastern districts, whose territory extended over most of what is now County Armagh and included Awen, the former Lydian capital. That's Awen Macha, of course. Other such septs were the Mudorni, the Ecrivton, the Emid, the Ethertry, uh, uh, Furley, and Emach, uh, Uish, Emach Uish. The last are notable in that there were branches of them in Brega and Mead, uh, Brega being, uh, you know, that old territory, uh, including uh, the great monuments of Brunabonia. It is in uh, and coextensive with the modern county Mead, but the old province of Mead was bigger 
um, M-I-D-E, uh, covering uh, what is, I think, largely what is t today's County Meath plus County Westmeath. It is a pro prob probable, probable, it is a probable inference that they originally belonged to the Midlands and that some of them participated in the conquest of Ulster as fighting men of the King of Tara and were rewarded with grants of conquered territory. Wow, an early plantation of Ulster. In the same way, the Kianacht of County Derry, a branch of those of the Midlands, doubtless got their lands in the north as a reward for their mil military service to the Sons of Nile. Let me just catch up on comments here for a second. Full Irish Gary is in the house. Another fine day on the sun. Yes, indeed, after all the rain. Tarini Pendleton is watching from Laguna Beach in California. Very good evening. I have to leave early, so I'll, I'll catch up later. That's Alan. Alan, hope you can join us for the quiz next week on Zoom. Uh, 200th anniversary quiz. David O'Shea, uh, Irish is the mother tongue, which is why they're still uh, relatively mutually intelligible, says David. Yes, indeed. Uh, Desiree is saying Colorado listeners want to team up together. Team Mythic Colorado, maybe. There you go. People are trying to bunch into teams already. Could be interesting. Could be competitive, you know. Canadian picked Northern Farmers tripping mighty on this channel. Yes, indeed. Very educational, says Robert Moray. Hello, Robert. Uh, a very good afternoon to you. Um, Selkie woman is saying you're making me laugh at work well at least I'm making somebody laugh uh, it's usually uh, all the my wife and kids when I when I uh, crack a joke uh, usually just face palm you know Lavi Darling says this is great glad you do this I'm glad we do it we've been doing it uh, for uh, two and a half years and come here listen don't forget to sign up for the quiz next week uh, the link will be shared on Facebook uh, and Instagram and etc. over the next two or three days. Jay Brown is in the house. Hello there, Jay Brown. Uh, is that like Homer J. Simpson? What does the J stand for? And he eventually finds out it's just J. J A Y. Um, where was I? Yes. The name applied to this conglomeration of vassal tribes was Na uh, Hargiela, uh, with a H in front of it connected with Giel hostage and apparently meaning something like the submitted or the hostage givers. It probably stands for Argielme or Old Irish Gielle, G-I-A-L-L-A-E, um, etc. In the course of time, uh, the kings of Aliak, descended from Owen, son of Nile, extended their territory southwards and eastwards at the expense of the Argiela. Uh, and we would know that as the, you know, Oriel. Is the anglicized version of that uh, sort of territory. A notable event in the history of Ulster is the Battle of Lecham, fought in 827, in which Niall Calle inflicted a heavy defeat on the Argiela and slew many of their kings. In Cor Anvon, eh, 144, we are told that, I think that's a year rather than a page number, we are told, no, it can't be because it's 827. Uh, yes, I don't know what that is. It's in literally in the middle of the sentence. In Cora Anvon, comma, 144, comma, we are told that as a result of this battle, the Argiela were thenceforth tributary to the descendants of Owen. This statement may well be true in substance, but may mean that after 827, the overlordship of the Argiela, which in theory belonged to the king of Tara, passed in fact to the king of Kenel Nogon, or Kenel, Kenel Noam. Um, are you following? This is difficult stuff. This won't be in the quiz, by the way, most of this. Vicky Wallace Sutherland is saying, hello, beautiful people, and hello right back at you. And if uh, Evan and Chile are watching, a big hello to them from all of us. A necessary preliminary to the settlement of the Sons of Nile in Ulster was the breaking of the power of the Ullad. A legend as to how this came about serves as a preface to the genealogist's account of the Argiela. According to the geneal genealogical convention, the Argiela were descended from three brothers known as the Three Collas, C-O-L-L-A-S, who were sons of Yohu Domlain, brother of Fiechu Sravtene, King of Ireland. They slew their uncle, Fiechu. They were afterwards pardoned by Fiechu's son, Muradach Tirach, who, knowing their prowess as warriors, urged them to attack the Ullad and make sword land of their territory. Accordingly, they went to the Comachta, who provided them with seven battalions of fighting men. At Karn Achi Letjerg in Fernvai, 
uh, this is F E R N N A G, but as you know, uh, uh, Fern, uh, ma, the M would be Lenited and the G would have the H, so it would be Fernvi, wouldn't it? Am I right? I think. Uh, please forgive me if I'm not. In County Monaghan, the Ullad were defeated in seven battles. Wow, jeez. Normally it only takes one, but it, you know these Irish warriors—they like their battles. The first six of these battles were won by the Connachta and the seventh and last by the Collas. The victors pursued pursued the Ullad as far as Glen Ridge, which is the valley of the Newry River, and made swordland of quote the territory in which dwell the Mudorni, the Ikrufton, the Arthur, and the Imakuish. Unquote. Thus were established the Argyla, who in early early historical times are in occupation of about half of the present territory or province of Ulster. That the foregoing legend has a solid basis in historical fact is unquestionable, though there is every reason to treat with scepticism the details with which the story has been embroidered. I love that term. You know, that you know, there, it is a solid base in fact, but the story has been embroidered with extra details. Quite a lot of that happened in the Middle Ages, as we know from previous episodes. The approximate date of the event it record of the event it records, the overthrow of the Ullad, has now to be considered. A prelude to the driving of the Ullad out of what is now County Armagh would have been the capture of their capital Owen near the town of Armagh. The capture of Owen is implied, but not specifically mentioned in the foregoing accounts. Other texts record the raising, or a Z-I-N-G, of Owen by the Collas as a result of their victory at Achu Lechjarg. Uh, and that literally means the field of the, of well, Let is half and Jarrig is red. Um, the destruction of Owen was rightly regarded as a decisive event in Irish history, and accordingly various attempts were made to date it. Of course, if we could trust the legend when it says that the event took place in the reign of Muradach Chirach, and if at the same time we could treat as historical the list of Lera's predecessors in the kingship and the lengths assigned to their reigns, then an approximate date could be arrived at at once. Who oh, am I missing here on the... Nobody, it seems. This is the method followed by Gila Coimoin, who reckons that the destruction of Awen took place 29 years before the death of Muradach Chirach, and that Nile Migyolach, that is, Nile of the Nine Hostages, died 49 years after Muradach and 27 years before the coming of St. Patrick. In other words, according to Gila uh, Coimoin, Awen was destroyed 105 years before AD 432, i.e. in the year 327. Well, hang on, I'm confused. Oh, yeah, okay. Never mind the fact that I'm confused. I'm easily confused. I confuse myself. I walk into a room and I go, How do I? Why, why did I come in here? Yes, I suspect some of, some of the others among you will be familiar with that kind of experience. Uh, Gila Coimoin elsewhere assigns a reign of 30 years to Muradach Chirach, and so does the World Chronicle, which places the destruction of Awan in the year following Muradach's accession. And if you want to follow up on that, that's Revu Celtic, uh, volume 17, page 29. In the year following Muradach's accession, sorry, similarly, the four masters make Muradach reign from 326 to 356. But they differ from the foregoing in assigning the defeat of the Ullad by the Collas and the ensuing destruction to, uh, of Awen to the fifth year of Muradach's reign, viz. 331, a date which has been accepted in our day, in our day by writers who ignore the fact that its only basis is a series of fictions. Wow. Are you all concentrating? Welcome to my world, Anthony, says Elaine. Yes, 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 yes. I walk into the room and I go, well, not only do I say, why, why did I walk in here? But I also say, what's my name? <laughs> Who am I? What am I doing here? What is this planet? You know, 
Uh, no, I'm only joking. On the other hand, we find a statement in Laura Gawala to the effect, that's the Book of Invasions to you and I, that Owen was founded in 450 BC and was destroyed in 450 AD by the three Colas after they had defeated and slain Fergus Fogga, the last Elidian king of Owen in the Battle of Ahu Lethjarug. Fascinating stuff. This statement is evidently based on an anonymous poem that follows, beginning Kimbaith Kleha Noch Auna. According to this poem, 450 years elapsed from Kimbaith, husband of Macha, the foundress of Awen, to the birth of Christ. Later in the poem, in what may well be a subsequent addition to it, there is mention of the battle won by the three Kalas in Fernvai, Fernvai in which Fergus Foga, the last king of Awen, was slain. And we are told that Awen was waste for 150 years before the coming of the faith, which would imply that it was destroyed in AD 281 or 282. Fascinating. Yet, in the very next quatrain, it is stated that 900 years intervened between Kimbaith and Fergus Foga. Is it Foga or Foga? There's no father on the O, so it's probably Foga, which, taken in conjunction with the date assigned to Kimbaith earlier in the poem, would imply that Awen was destroyed circa 450 AD. Uh, Rowan, uh, yes, yes, yes. Once sent a friend a birthday card that said, when you get to our age, you start thinking about the hereafter. Open card. Go into the next room and think, what the heck am I here after? <laughs> yeah. Paul Campbell is saying hello from Galway City on the Atlantic West Coast of Ireland. Paul, uh, very good to see you. Catherine Woodruff, I'm not sure if I said hello to you earlier, is in the house. Um, uh, a. Augustine says, me... My 23andMe account says that I'm related to Niall on my paternal side. Apparently he had a, has a lot of descendants. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, doubt that for a second. Um, uh, uh, Maureen says that that forgetfulness is a sign of very high intelligence. Well, thank you. It's the first time anyone said that to me. Most people say it's a sign of being a dope. Um, Paul uh, Campbell, just to say you may have missed the announcements at the beginning. Next week to celebrate episode 200, we're having a quiz on Zoom. I have prepared 100 questions. So uh, I look forward to uh, sharing the registration link for that over the next day or two. Thus, the dates proposed for the destruction of Awen vary between the extremes of AD 281 and AD 450. Obviously, no reliance can be placed on any of them. When they are not absolute guesswork, they are calculations based on fabricated regnal lists. Paul Campbell says, an elderly relation of mine used to say us Campbells from Swinford, County Mayo, were descended from Nile of the Nine Hostages. Interesting. Uh, interesting, too, because I have Campbell in my uh, immediate descendancy, as in um, uh, grandparent. I, my, uh, my grandmother, my grandmother's maiden name was Campbell. Hang on till I just kick this spammer out. Uh, you may hear a second me here. My mother's maiden name was Campbell. Yes, there's a second me. Wow. Uh, best adult dating site. Um, that's not what we're here for. I'd use it on this channel. Thank you for the heads up uh, in relation to the spam. Uh, that spam has now been removed. Mavanway Millward is sneaking in late again. Mavanway, I'm just telling you that next week we have a quiz to celebrate 200 uh, episodes. Uh, we're going to have a quiz on Zoom. It is highly important that people turn up on time for these episodes. Because you could miss information that would be vital to getting a, a, a question right and perhaps winning the quiz. You're very welcome. I Never mind me um, um, always highlighting the people who are late. I'm, I'm just having fun at your expense, which I shouldn't do. You know, let's be honest. Anyway, uh, you're very, very welcome. Wow, 200. I remember the 100th episode, says Paul. <laughs> I remember the first very well. Yes, indeed. My grandmother's maiden name was also Campbell, says Jason. I wonder if they related to Campbell's soup. Oh, never mind. That wasn't even a joke. That was terrible. Neither can any reliance be played on that part of the legend which represents the three Kalas as contemporaries of Muradach Chirach, grandfather, according to the pedigree, of Nile. The genealogists 
and likewise such historians as Flan Monstrich and Gilla Coimoin record that Fiachu Sravtene, the father of Murdoch, was slain by the Colas. But in other texts, the same Fiachu meets a very different end. He is slain along with his two brothers in the Battle of Knavros, in which the lion under Bressel Belach defeated Karra Lifacher and the men of Tara. Moreover, that's very funny, that name, Lifacher, because it looks like life chair. If you read it in English, it's just, it just looks like the, the words life and chair pushed together. Life chair. On Zoom, I'll need to be on my best behavior then. You know what the other thing about having the quiz on Zoom is? You can make sure that people aren't Googling the answers. Now. <laughs> so my advice between now and next week, if you're really competitive and you want to win the quiz, my advice is to watch all 199 episodes of Live Irish Myths. And I think you will be equipped with almost all the answers. Or do that and digest the entire Mythical Ireland website and you'll probably get most of the answers. There may be one or two that you'd have to dig a little bit deeper for. But anyway. Yes, 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 indeed. Apparently, everyone in the southern U.S. has a relative named Campbell. I wouldn't be surprised. There's a lot of them. Don't forget Joseph Campbell. I think he and I are definitely related. Or while he was alive, you know, a great man. Uh, where, where, where was I? Moreover, we find remnants of a tradition that the Collas, far from being, uh, sorry, far from belonging to the same generation as Niall's grandfather, were contemporary with Niall himself. In Bolle in Skoil, Yochum Mugmadon, Niall's father, takes the place of Fechu Shravtene in the usual legend, for he is slain by the three collars in the Battle of Dov. Uh, how do I pronounce that? <laughs> Kor. C O M B A I R. So C O M H B H A I R, I think. Dom Kor. Just as we elsewhere find Kala Ush reigning for four years after slaying fit this is difficult stuff folks you really need to concentrate hard on this i could read this 10 times and still not understand it just as we elsewhere find kola uash reigning for four years after slaying fechu shravtene so in a list of kings drawn up by marianus scotus we find kola uash reigning for four years after yohu mugmadon and before nile Evidently, there was at one time a rival version of the Kala legend, according to which the overthrow of the Ullad took place, not in the time of Niall's grandfather, but during the reign of Niall himself. This version would run thus in the outline. The three Kalas slew Yahu Mugmadon, Niall's father, and for some time Kala Uish reigned as king. Later, when Niall had won the kingship, although it doesn't tell us how, he pardoned the Collis and sent them to win, quote, sword land, quote, for themselves at the expense of the Ullad. I have little doubt that this version is the earlier one and that it is nearer historical truth insofar as it represents the conquest of Ulster as having taken place during the reign of Niall and ha as having been instigated by him. In, there are footnotes to all this, folks. Highly recommend you get this book. This is a fabulous book, uh, published in 1946. I would like to read The Hero's Journey by Joseph Campbell. Uh, well, it's The Hero with a Thousand Faces, isn't it, is, is what it's called. A fabulous piece of work, yeah. Really, 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 really brilliant, yeah. I have 62 first cousins on my mother's side, lol, says Desiree. Yes, indeed. That sounds very Irish. <laughs> uh, Selkie woman is saying, if you have a second screen, it wouldn't be difficult to cheat. Yes, but the whole point is to have fun, you know, not really to be competitive, you know. So hopefully, and I know the Mythical Ireland community, I think I know most of them very well. They're not a cheating sort of people, but they are a fun-loving sort of people. They will have great crack at next week's quiz. But they will not be Googling. Not. They will not. Do you hear me talking to you? In the long sustained efforts of the men of Tara to bring the northern province into subjection, the only power with which they had to contend was, as far as we can judge, that 
of the Ullad. Once the Ullad were overthrown and their capital raised, I used to say Uli and Ulla and all sorts of, apparently I learned the pronunciation of it in Matthew Stout's book about medieval Ireland, it's Ullad. There was no longer any serious obstacle to completing the conquest of the province. Yeah, Adrian, you've got the right answer. Hands on your head when during the quiz. Absolutely, keep your hands here at all. Time. Oh, how do you write your answers then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, write your write your answers on your head. <laughs> yeah, so I think we're all agreed. Yes, I think we are all agreed that there will be no Googling or cheating next week. Nobody would lower themselves to such things. You either know the answers or you don't. Sorry, once the Ullad were overthrown and their capital raised, there was no longer any serious obstacle to completing the conquest of the province. We know that three of the sons of Nile made conquests into northwest Ulster, almost certainly within the lifetime of their father. And it is natural to suppose that this was an immediate consequence of the destruction of the Illidian power by the three Colas, who, according to one tradition, were contemporaries of Nile. As the warfare against the Ullad was organised by the kings of Tara, it is impossible to believe that the three sons of Nile had not as prominent a part in the campaign in which Owen was destroyed as they shortly afterwards had in the conquest of the Northwest. The conclusion is inevitable. The three brothers known as the Collas were none other than Owen, Connell and Enda, the three sons of Nile. In this case, Enda has a cap, uh, a father on the E, which would mean it's pronounced Enda. That silly accent, says Miriam. Which one is? My name's Brian. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of your real first name, Casterton, Nick, and... Um, oh! Ah, 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 ah. oh, I hate that. It'll come to me in a second. I haven't been on... Uh, I, I have football on Monday evening, so I never get to tune in. I hope you're not practicing on the Hill of Tara. <laughs> That's a terrible joke. Uh, that's a joke about something we were talking about. Uh, Alex, yes, Alex, thank you. Alex, you're very welcome, as always. But come here, listen, you have to get your priorities sorted out. Football versus live Irish mates. Like, <laughs> you know, which one of those wins absolutely hands down every time without a fail and is very entertaining and it doesn't involve you getting your head kicked in football <laughs> yes my mother had 19 brothers and sisters between her real mother and stepmother her father was german it's amazing isn't it i mean back in the day you know back in the day irish families would regularly have 10 12 14 kids and, and live in a two or a one, or in some cases a one or a two bedroom shack, you know, <gasps> unbelievable. Um, and we all complain about space. I mean, you know, books, <laughs> but you can imagine two generations ago, you know, you've got 17 siblings and you're saying to your mother and father, where am I going to put me books <laughs> uh, out in the rain? That's where you'll put them. Uh, probably wouldn't be able to afford books back then in fairness. And I'm, I'm not laughing, laughing. I just, you know, like, Back then, we used to eat a handful of gravel and we used to live in a, a shoebox on all of that stuff. Um, Caitlin Moon. Oh, here we go again. Sorry. Caitlin Moon says, I have a paleography class right before this as well. Double double Irish mythology on Monday nights. There you go. Brilliant. Not football. Uh, apparently, the spammers are back. Oh. Boo. Boo, spammers. Feck off, as Father Jack would say. Feck off. Go and spam somewhere else. This is not the sort of place where people are looking for adult dating. Well, maybe it is. <laughs> but they're not, they're not going to follow some link to some dodgy website, you know? They're just going to reach out to, to each other right here on iLive Irish Bits and say, hey, would you like to be friends? <laughs> Thank you for the heads up about the spammer. As the achievements attributed to the Collas represent a fact of history, so the name collectively applied to them, not three Colla, uh, has all the appearance of having been handed down by genuine popular tradition. At the same time, it is obvious that Colla can, cannot have been the real name of each of the three brothers, and that it must therefore be a kind of nickname equally applicable to all of them. Now, Colla stands for the earlier for an earlier Conlay, C-O-N-L-A-E. 
and shows the change of NL to LL, which we find in several old words such as telach, uh, kolacht. It is thus identical with the personal name. What's telach? Is that heart? Is it uh, with the personal name, which in old Irish assumes the form conle, C O N L A E, or conle with two N's, C O N N L A E, and which in Middle Irish, when ND had come to be merely a way of writing NN, is often spelled condla, C O N D L A. Wow. Pokorni Alter Grammar, uh, paragraph 81, describes Conley from Cuno Vallejos, but erroneously, as the sort of blah, 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 blah. Yes, skip all that. Oh, dear, definitely. Uh, Caitlin Moon, this chapter, you're probably following this. You have this book, I presume. You, this will be right up your alley. You'll be reading all this and, and in delight. I'm sitting here going, oh, God, I'm getting a headache. Uh, anyway, he's going too far into the um, linguistics uh, for my liking. So I'm going to just skip a, a sentence or two. Hence, if I am right in identifying the three collas with the three sons of Nile and in taking their name to stand for Condolius, we might further suppose that Condolos was a name applied by some of his contemporaries to the powerful King Nile, ruler of the men of Tara, Tara and conqueror of the province of Ulster. Um, yeah, but what does it mean? Condo, head, and all great, great head, great chief. There you go. That's what it means. <laughs> Welcome to my world, says Caitlin. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It was the genealogists who, for their own ends, differentiated the three colours from the three sons of Nile. Faced with the problem of having to invent pedigrees for the congeries of tribes known as the Argila. Their ingenuity was equal to the occasion. The Argila owned their political, sorry, owed their political existence to the military successes of the three sons of Nile. And the genealogists whose task was to provide them with a noble pedigree found a convenient way of doing so by making them descend from, quote, the three Colas, unquote or Collas, if you like, anglicised, whom they linked to the Tara dynasty, though, of course, they could no longer treat them as sons of Nile. At first, apparently, they made them contemporaries of Nile, but later, perhaps in, 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 in order the better to distinguish them from Nile's sons, they pushed back their florid a couple of generations. It might be asked why, if the Colas were so closely akin to the ruling family of Tara, none of their descendants had ever been king of Ireland. The genealogists anticipated that question and had an answer ready. The Colas had slain Fecho Sravtane, king of Ireland, and in punishment for that crime, their descendants were excluded, excluded from the kingship. In an earlier version, as we have seen, the king of Ireland whom the Colas slew was Yahu Mugmadon. The name Nile appears to have originated with Nile Mugilach. The name is unknown in the pedigrees previous to his time and is devoid of mythological or prehistoric associations. I think it extremely probable that his real name was not Nile, a genitive Nail, but Nail, N E Father L, genitive Neul, N I U Father I L. The latter, identical with the word meaning cloud occurs as a mythal, mythical name in the pedigree of the Aeroin. And we also hear of Nail, N-E for the L, son of Cormac Gailing, an ancestor of the Luigni, Luigni of Mead. So we find Nail, father or son of Gael Glass among the ancestors of Meal. The tradition that is Meal, as in the Milesians, as in the King of Spain, uh, whose sons came to Ireland to take it from the two of the Danon. The tradition of the ultimate identity of Nile and Nail appears to have been long remembered, for the author of Arch Menvon Urd Makkoshe connects the two names. The change of Nail to Nile may be ascribed to the influence of the Giel of his constant epithet, Mugielach. From the new nominative Nile, a new genitive Nail, Nail was formed like Giel genitive Gael. Nile admittedly got his epithet, Mugielach, from the nine hostages. Nui Nail he had secured. These are said to have consisted of five hostages from Ireland, 
one from each province, and four from Britain. Alternatively, the four foreign hostages are said to have been one from Britain or Scotland, Alba, one from the Saxons, one from the Britons, Welsh, and one from the Franks. We may safely leave the foreign hostages out of account as a later embellishment and take it that Niles' nine hostages were Irishmen. We have seen that in internal affairs, the great achievement of Niles' reign was the conquest of Ulster and the establishment of a group of states collectively known as the Argyla, a name which is closely related to the Giel of Niles' epithet. When we read in the Book of Rights that the only claim that the King of Ireland had on the Ar uh, Argyla was that they should deliver, quote, nine hostages, unquote, into his custody, it is hardly possible to doubt that Niles' epithet has reference to those nine hostages of the Argyla. Wow. So there's where the nine hostages comes from. To sum up, Niall Muigialach and his father Yohu are the earliest historical kings of Tara. Uh, in other words, the ones that we can attest through the written records. Everything that comes before that uh, steps into the mythological realm and the unprovable realm, you know, the realm of do we know whether they really existed or not. Yes, somebody was pointing out that, yes, of course, the first hundred or so episodes we did daily. And that's why it's taken so long for 200 to come around com compared to 100. But anyway, I hope you're all enjoying yourselves. You're still, some of you are here desperately clinging on. Like, I mean, like, I don't know, like, like you have nothing better to do in life than to sit here on a Monday evening listening to me droning on, telling bad jokes, uh, mispronouncing people's names, um, you know, and uh, trying to read uh, weighty texts. God. It's no wonder Alex Casterton is playing football on a Monday evening. You know what I mean? He's got a life. What 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 could the rest of you say? Huh? I I know, I know, I know, I know. It's all right. I love you all too. Most of you are here just to hear Coda barking or, you know, saying hello to Saskia on the very, very rare occasion she makes herself known. Um, yes, so Niall and his father Yohu are the earliest historical kings of Tara. Of the internal events of Yohu's reign, approximately towards the end of the 4th century, we know nothing. Niall was the immediate predecessor of his son Lera, uh, that's Lera MacNeil, as in Lera, son of Niall, on the throne of Tara. The alleged reign of Na E, who died in 445, is a fiction. Niall's reign, which came to an end circa 427, covers approximately the first quarter of the 5th century. There is good evidence that his mother, Karen, C-A-I-R-E-N-N, -N, was a British captive, so that Niall himself was half British in blood. Which, if you think about it, is, is, is highly ironic. You know, that uh, one of the most famous Irish high kings had a mother who was probably British, and... Uh, that king and his sons uh, were the, the first to, as it were, plant Ulster. Oh, don't. Oh, man, that's just no. We're not going there right now. But look, you can see where I was going with that one. He was famed for his raids on Roman Britain. And there is no reason why we should not accept the tradition that he met his death while engaged in one of those raids. Yes, folks, long before the English ever uh, had a military presence in Irish in Ireland. Uh, uh, the Irish kings were making raids into Brit Britain. Some people tend to forget that when they talk about history. At home, his reign was marked by events which had a momentous effect on Irish history. Led by three of his sons, Owen, Connell and Ainda. I, I, I say Enda, but there's a father on the E. I don't know, Ainda. His forces finally overthrew the Ullads and raised, or a Z-E-D, their capital, Awan. One of the main results of this victory was the establishment on the conquered territory of a number of vassal peoples who came to be known collectively as the Argyla. From the hostages which he held from these vassal states, Niall got the epithet Mui Gialach of the Nine Hostages. To the east of Loch Ney, 
the Cruhan were raised to independent status and became the state of Dáil Maragi. I'm trying to pronounce this properly. Dáil, Dáil Maragi. I think is closer. Caitlin, help me here. <laughs> ah, yes, 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 yes. Ah, Peter Woods has joined us finally at the end of the episode. How good of you to join us. Peter, uh, just telling everybody earlier, we're going to have a quiz next week for the 200th uh, uh, episode. It will be on Zoom. I'll send out the, regist the registration link in the next couple of days. Um, I have 100 questions prepared. So you need to watch all previous 199 episodes of Liar of Irish Myths and um, uh, read the entirety of the Mythical Ireland website and all my books, and then you'll have all the answers. Caitlin says, you're asking the American? <laughs> Funnily enough. Yes, I know another American, uh, Morgan Daimler, who can translate Middle Irish. I mean, it's unbelievable uh, the lengths to people go, go to. I know you're good at the languages. I know it. Um, but yes, um, perhaps you... you we. I'll tell you what... You, you, couldn't do any worse than me. You certainly couldn't. In the northwest, in sorry, in northwest Ulster, Niall's three sons established kingdoms for themselves, two of which play an important part in later history down to the 17th century. The conquest of the entire province of Ulster must have enormously increased the power and prestige of the Tara dynasty. And it is not unlikely that the claim of the King of Tara to be, quote, King of Ireland, unquote, originated at this time. Actually, during a period of close on six centuries, the kings of Ireland were, almost without exception, sprung from Niall Nigeolach. Fascinating stuff. Absolutely fascinating, you know. So much, so much wonderful information in so many volumes. And only... 24 hours in a day and seven days in the week and only one of me. Oh, it's amazing this stuff. Really it is. Evan said, giggle snort. Mum, do we do we have homework? <laughs> I wouldn't, I uh, just know I wouldn't wish that my worst enemy to have to watch all 199 episodes of Live Irish Mints. I was kind of kidding but I'd say if you had a really good memory, if you had a photographic memory and he had been watched all all the episodes you probably would have ha have 80 80 percent of the answers to next week's quiz excuse me but i need to take notes says barbara and i can't spell any of the names i'm doomed now i will say one thing about the quiz and that is i will accept v variants of the spelling why first of all not everybody is a gaelgore like myself i don't speak fluent irish and won't be familiar with this. Secondly, and more importantly, the monks couldn't decide on the uh, spellings of the names. You just look at any of the, you look at, um, especially the Electronic Dictionary of the Irish Language, uh, dil.ie, and look up a, a proper name, like a, a, a person's name or a place name, and you'll find that there are at least three variants of the spelling, and in some cases, 12 or 14. I'm serious. So I, I'll be okay about um, spellings. Don't worry about spellings. It, it, so long as it's a good approximation of the answer, I won't have a problem with your spelling. I will not mark you down for the spelling unless I specifically ask for it. I'm not sure. I'm just trying to think, was there a question where I, I insisted that the spelling be? I don't think there is. So don't worry about the spelling, you know. Um, uh, Caitlin says, I'm accepting bribes to be on someone's team. Uh, perhaps given that you have a specialist knowledge, Caitlin, you'd be better off being one of the scorers. I'm, jo I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, yes, look, you're all, you'll all be very welcome. I'd love to see a big crowd of you there and uh, loads of nice little teams. And sure, look, if you want to do it on your own, do it on your own. Absolutely. You don't have to be on a team. But it was suggested before when I raised the issue of doing a quiz some people were saying oh can we have teams can we do you know so it seems that there's popular demand for it you know uh adina wants to know what bribe will you accept <laughs> oh i tell you they're all at it it's already so you can see that there's obviously some serious interest in um some serious interest in the quiz so tune in absolutely when i say tune in i mean Keep a very close eye on, if, if you're not on Facebook and you're watching this on YouTube, the registration link will be sent to 
it will be published on the Mythical Ireland Facebook page and the Mythical Ireland community and the Mythical Ireland creators on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter. Now, where else could I, I could post it to the mailing list. So if you've signed up to the mailing list on the Mythical Ireland website, I'll, 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 I'll mail it out so that people can register. So the more the merrier, you know. I don't think there's any, I don't know what restrictions I have on my Zoom account. Um uh on my current plan i think i'm would so would anybody know i think i'm paying 15 euros a month for zoom and um, would anybody know if i'm limited to a certain number um or how i would be able to find that out quickly and easily i know that i can have a two-hour meeting so like you know the way the free account is is re restricted to 40 minutes um Am I on the 100 attendees? I think I might be. Oh, okay. So we won't be able to have more than 100. So I better not email it out to the mailing list because there's a lot of people on the mailing list. There's a thousand and a half people on the mailing list in case we were oversubscribed and then some of the regular people couldn't. You know what I mean? Well, you know, I don't think that'd be good. Um, so I, I can have up to 100 attendees. Other thing is, perhaps one of you has a business account. I have the pro account. Um, does anybody have a business Zoom account which would allow up to eight, 300 attendees that we could use? Helena says, didn't you have 150 last time? Yeah, but you see, we used to use, um, I used to use somebody else's uh, Zoom account for this. I, I only got my own in the past year. Um, yeah, the limit is about 100, says Joe. We might end up just having 15 people. You know, I'm hoping we'll have a big crowd. Um, yeah, thanks, Caitlin. Yeah, maybe just to put that out there, if any anybody has a business account that we could use, um, I'm just a little bit, I wonder if I upgraded... Can I upgrade for a month and then downgrade again? Does anybody know? I, will, I, I would do that. I'd be willing to do that. Um, the problem is per year. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm dithering now. Um, I'm just not sure all of a sudden. Um, yeah, I'd like to have. I'd like to have more than a hundred, just in case we get a lot of people registering. You know. A good cheat sheet, says Barbara. Write down all the names in the episode descriptions. In fairness, actually, a, a good deal of the questions are archaeological and some of them are about Irish history. So it's probably not the best advice just to watch the 199 episodes. Um, let me see if anybody else is saying anything. Do you just have the captions? Sorry, went wrong one. Do you just have the cap the captains? on one and teams in the groups. I'm not sure what you mean, um, Adrian. Caitlin, then we will have to compensate you. Whiskey or pints? <laughs> or whiskey and pints. Yes, yes, yes. Callum Barrett has arrived. Callum, a very good evening to you. You're very welcome to the end of this episode. <laughs> I'm just plugging the fact that next week to celebrate 200 uh, episodes, we're having a quiz. We're going to have it on Zoom. Gauge interest with FB event, possibly, says Heather Marie. Yeah. Yeah. I can't find the Morgan Llewellyn interview, says Anne Scott Doherty. Are you uh, a Bronze Age patron, Anne? Um, if you are, you should be able to scroll back and find it. If you're not, you won't be able to find it. Um, Caitlin, books are currency. This is very true. You know, we're all, always talking about cows being currency for 4,000 years in Ireland. Now books are currency. In this group, they are anyway. Um, I can get the info to you, says uh, Peter. But better half is a Zoomer. Okay. Yeah, so um, as soon as we figure out uh, which Zoom account we're using, uh, I hope I can... I'll plan to send the link out ASAP to give people a chance to register. And I'll plug it every day because sometimes... when I, I know in the past I've had Zoom events like the live conversations with Eddie Lenehan and Moncon McGann and, and uh, others. And people have 
emailed me during and afterwards to say I'm really disappointed. I, I never got the link. It's like, you know, if you sign up for it, you'll get the link sent to your email. The important thing is that in some cases, these people hadn't signed up, you know. Patricia says, Coda has all the answers. Oh, yes. But is he going to tell you? Just between us, he likes steak. He likes the fat of pork uh, chops. He likes sausages. So, I mean, if you want to bribe him, feel free, you know. Astro says, why are we talking about pints or whiskey? Pints of oh, whiskey. <laughs> pints of whiskey. Yes, indeed. I like that. I like that. Anyway, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you all for tuning in this evening. Don't forget that the Mythical Ireland calendar is on its way to me. As soon as I have copies, they will be emailed out to all the people who have ordered them. If you're ordering the calendar, don't forget to use the discount code that is uh, applicable to all or orders until the 31st of October, which is that word there, Myth Iron New, M-Y-T-H-I-R-E-N-E-W, all capitals, Myth Iron New, to get a 10% discount on your order. And don't also don't forget, if you want a ticket for one of the Four Knox tours on Sunday, the 12th of November, get them quickly because they are being snapped up very, very, very quickly. Susan says, thank you, Anthony. Always good to listen to Irish myths whenever I can. We always enjoy having your company, actually. And uh, thank you for coming along. Love you all. Thank you. Uh, sorry, says uh, Vicky. Uh, love you all. Thank you for the lovely day. Thank you indeed. And again, hello to Evan and Chili. And uh, no, tell him not to worry about the homework. Um, he can watch what he wants and listen to do what he wants and read what he wants. There's no... Uh, we'll have fun next week. That's what we will do. More than anything else, we'll have a bit of crack. So there you go. Uh, ciao for now, uh, Jay Brown. Ciao, arrivederci. Uh, uh, some of you, I, I don't know if I'm getting this right. Is it la pros, prossima volta? Uh, which prossimo is like the Italian of proximity, as in the, the next or the nearest. Uh, is it la prossima volta or volto? Vol, volta? It, it basically means next time, I think. And perhaps the linguists in the room are slapping their heads going, Anthony, you just completely balls that up. Uh, Anya, Ryan, I'm not sure that I said hello to you earlier. Um, did I? I'm not sure. Hello and goodbye. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Volta. Yes, indeed. Mavanway says Volta. La, la prossima volta. Until next time. Yes, indeed. Or, as we like to say, os gelga slonga fol makarjigal air. Togabogay. Ikawa, Kolosov, and all that. Importantly, Togabogay. <laughs>